Children, now quietly pack up your things. I'll have a look at the drawings in the morning. Class dismissed. Johnson, aged seven, spends a great deal of time in trams. occasions, Peter visits the city by tram. And Peter is, of course, an experienced tram driver himself. <laughs> Peter is one of the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board's best customers. Unlike his father, who prefers to drive. Wherever he goes. Just look at that, will you? Great monster. All they do is cause congestion and block up the road. But surely it's the other way around, Mr. Johnson. It's you who's blocking the tram. Well, that's not the point, old man. The roads belong to cars. If I had my way, I'd get rid of trams altogether. All right, we'll give your recommendation a try. Let's see. Yes, this should do. There, that's fine. Now let's take the tram out of the picture. It certainly leaves a nice wide space. Ah, but we forgot. That tram was carrying 90 passengers, Mr. Johnson. How do we get those 90 passengers to work now that their tram is gone? Simple, old man. Let them drive cars. Hmm, uh, thank you. Now, statistics show that each car driven to the city contains an average of one and a quarter people. 
Now, one and a quarter into 90. Yes, that's about 70 cars. Good heavens. As you can see, these cars, even when they're jammed head to tail, take up 20 times more road space than the tram did. Multiply them by several thousand peak period tram trips a day, and you'd have one third of a million additional cars on the road. There'd be such traffic chaos that none of us would ever get to work. Oh no, Mr. Johnson. Trams don't cause traffic congestion. They help to minimize it. All right then. I was mistaken. You can't accommodate all the city's tram passengers and cars. Well, replace the trams with buses then. Certainly. Buses coming up. Hey, wait a minute. You've replaced that tram with more than one bus. You've got two and a third buses. I had two. A bus has a far smaller passenger carrying capacity than a tram. The tramways board is in the bus business, in a big way. But it confines its buses to areas of sparser population. Melbourne's densely populated areas need trams. In situations like these, trams are the motorists' best friend. They help keep the roads clear of traffic that would prevent you from driving at all. When it comes to moving large crowds, there's no vehicle more efficient than a tram. While cars are still struggling to get free of the parking area, the trams are off and away. Already they've cleared most of the crowd. But that's only part of the story. Trams are good citizens of Melbourne too. If you have a little time to spare, I'll show you some of the many ways in which trams contribute to the good life of Melbourne. First and most obviously, there's the transport service they provide. Whichever direction you want to go in the Melbourne area, there's a tram or bus to take you, comfortably and safely. everyone who travels this way rather than by car is doing his bit to relieve our city's growing traffic congestion. The area within nine and a half miles of the GPO is served by trams. Beyond that there's a detailed bus network reaching to Warrandyte and beyond. Melbourne's trams run 16 hours a day. And the board's buses run 24 hours a day. This service doesn't just happen. Let's ask an expert to describe in detail the planning behind it all. May we introduce Mr. R.J. Risson, Chairman of the Tramways Board. Yes, nothing of course just happens, or if it does, it probably happens wrongly. A great deal of pre-planning is necessary. And in transport, and maybe other things too, 
The simpler and smoother a thing appears on the surface, the greater the amount of work probably put into it beforehand. My point is well illustrated by this map, showing the board's tram and bus services interweaving and crisscrossing over, oh, some 200 square miles of metropolitan Melbourne. At present, the board has upwards of 4,500 employees, most of them, of course, in uniform, but quite a large number not in uniform backing them up. And it could do with another two or three hundred right now. There are nearly 700 trams on Melbourne streets. Looking after them takes a lot of men. Cleaners, overhaulers, tradesmen of all sorts. The routine servicing, of course, is done in the depots. But the major overhauling, and sometimes almost complete rebuilding, is done in the Preston workshops, which are specially equipped for the purpose. Here you find these big wheel lays, which turn the tyres into the correct shape to fit in the grooves of the tram rails. Even the new tyres, when they come from the foundry, are roughly to shape, but they have to be turned to the correct profile. And those that have been in use and have worn come back to the workshop in the new course and are brought back to the correct shape again to go back into service once more. The tyres, of course, are steel, but many of the wheel centres now incorporate rubber sandwiches. This gives smoother riding and of course much reduces the noise. It's a big improvement but it doesn't go quite far enough. So we're now experimenting with composition brake shoes in place of the old cast iron ones. So the results of this on the newer trams are highly encouraging but it's not so good on the older ones. The only correct thing to do with them is to replace them by, well, by new trams. There are 220 odd of them, by the way, have their own workshop up at North Fitzroy. Here we do all the work that is necessary for maintaining and overhauling them, including really completely rebuilding engines, and of course other work as well. As far as the engines are concerned, when they've been overhauled, each one goes on the dynamometer firstly to test it to see that there's nothing wrong with it and then after that it's run in for about seven hours so that when it is put into a bus and taken on the road it can be run at full normal speed right from the outset no need of any nursing depot, of course, has its own facilities oh, for minor maintenance and day-to-day -day servicing. Buses like trams must look well in addition to being good. The buses are cleaned with a giant vacuum cleaner. To help it, the dirt and tickets and paper and matchsticks are stirred up with an air lens. After that, the bus is driven through an automatic washing machine to clean it externally. That's why they go out sparkling every morning. Because of its size, it pays the board to do many things for itself. For example, virtually all its own printing, except the tickets. That requires special machinery. But such things as timetables, forms, leaflets, notices, brochures, and all that sort of thing. 
We do that on our own premises with our own machinery and our own men. In any job, training is important. It's especially necessary for tram driving. So the board has a tram driving school in constant use at its fourth on depot. Here selected applicants who must be experienced conductors and therefore accustomed to traffic are taught the theory of tram driving, practice on stationary models, all this before they have an opportunity to go on the road and practice under skilled instructors before they ever drive passengers. The Tramways Board is a public service, but we are also running a business, obliged to pay our own way entirely out of our own earnings. That's one reason why we make all our own uniforms. We started it during World War II and it was so successful that we've continued it ever since. We're satisfied that we make them not only better but cheaper than we could buy. Thank you, Conductor. Yes, sir, the ambulance is in attendance. Thank you, Conductor. The L3 and Z to overhead wagon R6. Over to R6. R6, Antrim, Motor car in collision with tramway pole at the intersection at Park and Palmerston. Breakdowns and delays must be dealt with immediately. Fifteen years ago, the board installed its own two-ray radio system. Any accident or delay is reported immediately to the radio centre, which then calls the appropriate officers and sends them direct to the scene. Thank you, six. VL3 and Z to R11. Out to R11. It's R11, Kingsline Sturt Street. Motor car in collision with the tramway pole at the intersection of Park and Palmerston Street. Over. It's R11. Back at the school, down the road. Thank you. Power breakdown can be equally serious. So control of the whole of the board's overhead electrical system, you know, the trolley wires and that sort of thing, is centralised at what we call our Carlton Electrical Control. Here, a detailed display enables the control supervisor to pinpoint any trouble as soon as it occurs and take immediate remote control action to correct it. Necessary, he can also use the two-way radio to send someone to a trouble spot. The board now lays all its tram tracks in concrete and in so doing builds the best roads in Melbourne as every motorist knows. And at the same time it's saving the municipalities and so their rate pays about one million dollars a year. Road making is only the beginning of Citizen Tram's good work. The Tramways Board provides concession fares to school children and students. This costs the board more than $765,000 per annum. Concessions to pensioners cost another $555,000. And the cost of making and maintaining that central 19 feet of road in which the tram tracks are set saves ratepayers from paying out nearly one million dollars a year. In all, the value of these concessions and the road making provided by the board amounts to 11% of its gross revenue each year. If this money were refunded to it, the board would move from the red into the black. The Tramways Board, your Tramways Board, gets no subsidy from anyone. It stands on its own feet, or its own wheels, subsisting entirely on the fares you pay.
square pays for many worthwhile things. New bus and tram routes, for example, planned so that our transport service will grow as Melbourne grows. And here's something else your tram ticket will help pay for. It's the board's long-term plan to introduce trams like these. Trams of the latest European design. Resilient wheels. Many Melbourne trams have these already. A quieter braking system that makes tram travel even safer. Automatic acceleration for smooth starting. And in future, we could be travelling around in super trams like these. employee, we've found, serves you better when his leisure time is well provided for. So, of course, there are plenty of canteens and clubs at the depots. Tramway men keep winning competitions, they'll soon have to buy a bigger trophy case. Vimy House is the Tramways Benefit Society's hospital. The board paid most of the capital cost of this hospital. Your humble tram ticket has helped pay for another form of leisure time too. This is Wattle Park, where these two retired trams have come to rest. They are now working harder than ever, bringing enjoyment to countless numbers of children. Wattle Park, where families come to picnic and to play. Park is a gift to the people of Melbourne. A gift that is paid for by one of our city's best citizens. <laughs>